Hi, I'm Maya from Book From Dreams and welcome to a new video. Uh, today I'm going to talk about all the books that I've read in July. Uh, when I'm filming this, it's not the end of July. Um, I am actually going on vacation soon and so I'm just going to um, tell you all the books I've read to my vacation and there's going to be a vacation vlog when I get back and I'm going to talk about all the books I read on vacation. So uh, I've read eight books so far and why this number is so high is because I this month I focused on a bunch of books I started before and I was like I need to finish this so you know most of the books I've read not most of them but like half of them uh, is uh, stuff I started uh, last month this year last year so I just focused and I read those I've read three paranormal romances, I read three fantasy books, I read one science fiction book, and I read one book which is alternate history, I guess, if that's a genre. I think it is, but I'll just say it is. So let's talk about the paranormal romances first. Uh, the first book I want to mention is Fire in His Blood by Ruby Dixon. Uh, I continued with my uh, Ruby Dixon train <laughs> that started two months ago. Uh, but yeah, so this is a paranormal romance in which we have a dude who shifts into a dragon, or a dragon who shifts into a dude actually, uh, and we have, you know, Earth, which is devastated by dragons. So basically the plot takes place in uh, on Earth uh, after something happened and a rift opened and dragons came to, the, to Earth and basically destroyed everything. And now people are living in these uh, small communities in bigger towns and then just sort of turned them into forts. And uh, we follow our main character, a girl whose name escapes me, and she's basically surviving as, uh, you know, being a scavenger and, and, and a thief and basically getting things for, for people in power. She gets caught and then sentenced to death by back. Basically, they just put her out uh, into the wild in hopes, hoping that she will tame the dragon. Now, the thing is... Um, the dra they don't know that dragons can shift into people, so so how she was supposed to tame the dragon? You can just fill the blanks by yourself. Uh, anyway, um, this book, I mean, it's a, it turns into romance and whatever, they get together. Uh, but um, uh, my problem with this book was that I did not like the world that it was set in. Like, the, because, uh, I mean, I don't mind reading the stupid ones and everything, but I hate it when f women are basically um, just boiled down to their like their reproductive parts so the only thing you can so a wo only thing a woman can do in this world is to be you know uh, to sell herself and her body to get what you know whatever supplies and shit that she needs you know they're being used for whatever and i just i don't like reading that and the whole time our main character was basically whining about her sister because her sister is so um like for someone who grew who grew up in this world she is not capable of surviving it and she's like, all this time, instead of teaching her how to survive this world, she's basically just coddling her and protecting her. And, and after she gets taken by the dragon, she's like, all this time, she's worrying about her and what, what uh, like, oh my god, my poor sister, she's too trusting. She's going to do this. She's going to do that. And I'm like, I'm trying to enjoy this romance between you and the dragon, who basically, they can't communicate until they are mated. So it's very, it's it was very strange. Um, yeah, but anyway... It was it was kind of meh, <laughs> and I kind of I was like, okay, now it's time to stop reading uh, Ruby Dixon and, and move on to some other um, authors, and I did. And then I moved on to Catherine Moon. Uh, I watched Jensen's vlog where she I'll leave the links down below and everything, where she uh, I think it's called Jensen reads her channel is called Ch Jensen reads books or G reads romance something like that. So basically, she had a reading vlog where she read a reverse harem books. So I was like, okay. I mean, I read some reverse harem books and I wanted to see if she we read the same and she recommended something. And she recommended something called, <laughs> I'm gonna forget, A Lady of Rock's Grave Manor, which is so awesome. So basically it's a reverse harem book about a girl named Esther and she, um, this is set in like, you know, Victorian England, let's say, uh, because there's manners and stuff, whatever. Uh, she basically then uh, loses her job as a maid and starts working in a brothel for monsters in which she basically assembles her own harem. She has like her group of guys and uh, each, of them, each of the guys is like a different supernatural creature. And, you know, basically uh, we follow as their relationships develop and how she, she's like the best because she accepts them for who she is and everything. 
Um, the smut scenes were fantastic. It was so good. I just enjoyed the whole book. And there, there's like a, a little, there's plot of like a, a evil house. Like there's lots of brothels around the world with that kind of thing. And there's like the evil brothel, which basically doesn't focus on the women choosing. It's just basically focused on causing pain to women and men, whoever worked there. So, um, a little bit of plot, but the relationship and the smut and everything, it was so good. It's like my favorite verse harem book that I've read so far. When, when I read that and I enjoyed it so much, I was like, I want to read something else that uh, Catherine Moon wrote. And then I read something called, uh, what is it called? Baby and the Late Night Howlers. <laughs> so basically this is um, a book set in the Omegaverse. So the Omegaverse are werewolves, basically. And it's uh, werewolves and their packs and there's sort of their hierarchy in their packs. You have the Alpha, you have the Beta, and you have the Omega. So basically a baby. I mean, whoever names their child baby, it's whatever. Anyway, a character is like, it will ruin the word baby for you if it hasn't, if it hasn't been ruined already. So basically, baby is a beta werewolf. And uh, at some point, she turns into Omega. It basically comes into her, like, Omega-ness. I don't know. And in the werewolf pack, Omegas are there to sort of... Um, they're there to basically mate and basically <laughs> to... Um, help a pack come together better. They're there to um, uh, not fulfill the pack, but make, make it whole, you know? Make it complete. Complete the pack, I guess. So when she turns Omega, she basically chooses a pack, the Late Night Howlers. They're also a biker gang. Um, uh, because, you know, there's like a place where they go and then you can choose the pack, you go interview and whatever and see if they can take care of you and then you go spend your time with them. And you basically we follow Baby as she goes through her heat with the Howlers. Um, there's some plot of, you know, the biker gang being um, at war or whatever, in conflict with another biker gang and so on. Um, I mean, the smart scenes were fun. The problem with this book for me was, uh, first of all, not as good as the lady in the Rock Scrape Manor book, number one. Number two, our male characters had two names. They had their own name and the name of their biker gang. So, like, a guy could be named John and his biker gang would be... I don't know, killer or whatever. So, you know, everyone would uh, refer to anyone with either of those two names and I would be so confused because I was like, I'm not going to take out a paper and make a list because I don't want to. And then when I read the book, I was like, oh, at the end you had the, you had the list of names and that would have been so much helpful if, I, helpful if I knew it before. But anyway, that was so confusing and it, it was like, I'm, when she's like, uh, talking to them and whatever. I'm like trying to figure out who is who. Like I know, I remember the Alpha's name. I can't tell you now because I forgot, but I was reading, I remember the Alpha's name. But everyone else was like, I think the Alpha's Josiah or something. Anyway, uh, but everyone else, I was so confused most of the time. So yeah. So let's talk about um, the fantasy book I read. So I finally finished this thing. So this is Brothers in Arms by Louis McMaster Bujold. This is, um, I don't even know what book this is. I think this is I want to say seven, but I'm not sure. Basically, this is a book in the Miles Vorkosigan series. Uh, Vorkosigan, I still don't know how to pronounce this, either in Croatian or in English, so I don't know, you'll just have to suffer. So this series follows Miles Vorkosigan, and he is a son of a very important dude on the planet called Bear, and, and his mother is not from that planet. And while they were together, his parents, and while well, his mother was pregnant, they were attacked by political enemies, and she was poisoned with some cast or something which made Miles be, a, I mean, be born, but be born very fragile and with some uh, genetical uh, deficiencies, basically to his body. He's very intelligent and he's very uh, cunning and he's, he's just, he's just very smart and very funny. I mean, he's so ruthless, but whatever. So basically in the first book of this series, we follow as um, Miles tries to go through military school and during, because of his physical deficiencies, I mean, deficiencies, disabilities. I know, it basically, I remember when Rick read this first time I was in high school. Basically, he's doing the obstacle course and we have to like climb up a thing and then jump down. He basically jumps down and breaks both his legs because his, um, his um, bones are very fragile. So that was like hilarious. I mean, not when, you, but yeah, it's really, it's really cool. Anyway, so in this one, uh, Miles is on Earth and they're like, he and his um, mercenary band are on a, uh, I want to say R&R, &R, but you know, they're on R&R &R and he's trying to get his government to pay for his mercenary gang because they have to function at some point. Uh, and then some political intrigue happens. Now, 
um, I think the problem when you read a book, I've read, I started this book like last year, I think, and it took me so long because I was like, I'm not interested in what's happening. But it's like I wasn't in the mood and I read it, took this for translatathon for two rounds and I never read it and I read it after that and it's just, stuff happens and it's just, it was kind of mad because you, when you are so sort of, when you read a book after, you know, in in such a long period of time and like lose interest and just want to finish so you can say you finished it and I didn't want to give up because I do want to continue reading in this series but yeah, I wasn't, um, uh, interested at all at the end. The alternative history book I read is My Calamity Jane by Brody Ashton. Something Meadows and something else. I always forget the names. I'll write them down here so so you know. Uh, basically this is book three in my Janie series in which each book follows a different uh, Jane um, from uh, history and gives it a very playful and fun um, uh, twist. So basically uh, in this book uh, Calamity Jane uh, we, this is set in the Wild West, if you don't know who Calamity Jane is. She's uh, a companion to Wild Bill Hickok, and uh, she was like sort of a, a prominent figure in in uh, American history during the, world, the, the gold rush in the Wild West. Basically, um, if you watched the show Deadwood, then you know who Calamity Jane is. Uh, in this book, uh, Calamity Jane works with uh, Wild Bill Hickok and his son Frank in like a circus. They, they do their tricks and stuff. Um, like with the whip and the guns and stuff and they have a dog and whatever and uh, well, they, they do that and they also hunt um, werewolves basically um, and then you know stuff happens uh, with this book I mean also it took me a long time to read because I just wasn't feeling it I wasn't enjoying the, the first of all there wasn't as much humor as it was in the first two books of this uh, series I dropped my book um, uh, and there there were so many references I'm like what it just like basically like there's any pop culture reference that you can make it was made there was the Marvel's references uh, the, there was like um, uh, Harry Potter there was like so many things like I'm just reading and I'm like will you stop with the references uh, as I said, it, there wasn't like a specific, and also uh, we follow Annie Oakley and she's one like one of the, there's like three main characters, so uh, Calamity Jane, Frank and Annie Oakley. Annie Oakley was so unlikable and she was just so, because she uh, grew up uh, and she was like tortured by some werewolves and so she goes around hating them and since most of our main characters are werewolves, um, it's like, um, you know, she's just came out came out as very bigoted and very it was just so like annoying to read and I just I just didn't didn't gel with it so basically this this third one was kind of a disappointment and, it, and I enjoyed the first two books of this series much more and now let's get to the fantasy books I've read so first I want to mention oh, I read this Jim Butcher's uh, Battleground um, I do have a vlog of me reading this um, it's just, this is book, I think, 17 of the series, so I can't tell you much. I can just tell you that Harry Dresden, the dude here, he usually doesn't wear, he doesn't wear a hat in the books. Uh, basically, he's a wizard in Chicago, and uh, this urban fantasy series uh, follows him as he, in the beginning, solves various cases, but then everything kind of develops into a bigger uh, overarching story with the world building and everything. And in the books 17 and, uh, about 16 and 17, um, Harry fights a titan with the help of his friend friends and it's it's um i gave this one four stars because uh, the battling the ba the battling the fighting can uh sometimes get repetitive and uh yeah but other than that i cried because something happened and um i am so looking forward to the sequel uh even though i was kind of i wasn't disappointed but it was kind of like at the end, we find out that the battles and everything that's been happening is sort of set up for something more. And I was like, why do we have to go through so much shit? <laughs> Just so this could be like, in the grander scheme of things, it doesn't matter. I was like, why? Because, you know, when this, you know, with each book, the bad guy becomes uh, larger, larger and bigger and more scary and everything, which then puts the other bad guys kind of, you don't matter. And stuff that happened in this book is so important and so, as I said, I cried because something horrible happened. It's just, it kind of sucks that at the end, it was like, oh, 
that's not important right now because this huge looming uh, threat that's going to happen, you know, I guess, in the next couple of books. But yeah, uh, I'm enjoying the series and I am continuing, but that kind of ending was kind of like, well, and last two books I want to talk about is um, Christina and I have been reading Sarah J. Maas's Throne of Glass series from the beginning of the year, so we're supposed to read one book a month. I, of course, I fell behind. So in July, I caught up and I'm now <laughs> far ahead from Christina because I started reading the last book and she hasn't. Uh, basically, yeah, I finished book five, which is Empire of Storms, and I finished book six, which is Tower of Dawn. There will be uh, reviews coming of these two books with me and Christina. Uh, basically, these are books five and six in the in the series in which we follow uh, Selena Sedorthian. Uh, she is a, an assassin who works for the evil king and then, you know, she doesn't work for the evil king anymore and she's trying to get into her own and whatever. Uh, I can't really tell you much because it will be spoilery and I don't want to do that for people who haven't read the series. All I have to say for this series is that um, you have to survive the first two books. The first book is typical YA and it will be annoying, it will annoy you how annoying the main character is. But then as you go on and the character is fleshed out and you um, get the, you know, world and you get the everything, it's just so fun. It's fun, it's entertaining, it's fast paced. I'm reading this last one, it's, I've, it was the most anxious I've ever been reading a book because each chapter brings something new and it just, anyway, uh, basically in this one, uh, uh, Selena goes around and tries to find an army for her battle. And this one, we follow Kale, which is one of the like the first uh, three main characters. So in the first book, we had three main characters. We had Selena, we had a uh, we had um, Dorian, and we had um, Kale. Now Kale is annoying, and is he is he can be at moments very very awful. Uh, but uh, this book sort of gives us his background, and he gives it gives us. Um, a way he sort of rises above it and gives us a very good character act arc for him and of course very important information that we need for the last book that comes after this one uh but yeah i read this too and that's it for so the first three weeks i think yes one two yes yeah, three weeks of july i read eight books i'm going on vacation probably going to read some more but that will be in the vlog uh, later on so this is it. Um, if you've read any of the books that I have and you want to share your thoughts, please do down below in the comments. If you like this video, you can press the like button, you can subscribe to our channel, uh, uh, and you can press the bell, not bell to get notifications uh, to, to see when we post new videos. And there are some important links down below in the description box, so please do check them out. And that is pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!